Hello and welcome to our T4 sessions for Yellowfin for BI best practices. Um, our session today is lesson one which is focusing on report best practices. Um, also part of um, this T4 course will also be lesson two which is focusing on dashboard best practices and lesson three which will be focusing on metadata or view best practice. In our particular section today I will be focusing on best practices for report creation um, and management. So looking at things like um, highlighting conditional formatting, ways to create your reports um, in the best possible way, ways to make those reports easily understandable and easy to interpret. Um, also looking at how to make those reports reusable and how to embrace some of the um, norms and regulations within your organization in terms of look and feel and styling. So the first section we'll be looking at today in our best practice, uh, we'll be looking at uh, how to keep your reports uh, compact and targeted. So one thing we do recommend in Yellowfin is to really uh, try not to overload your users. So really make the reports short and sharp and to the point. And this can be done easily by breaking the reports up um, into smaller, more manageable pieces. So this could be using um, some of the functionality in Yellowfin to be able to do this. So it could be done through things like um, using drill down functionalities, through drill throughs, drill anywhere. And really your aim here is to reduce the sizes of the reports, the run times and the data loaded, but also to make those reports more easy to interpret, more intelligible for the users so they don't get overrun or overawed with too much data in one place. So if we do look at a bit of an example of how you might break up your reports to make them more targeted, um, this is an example of uh, a drill through report we've set up. So we actually do have uh, two reports created here. This may have previously been one larger report. What we've done is we've broken it down to make it easier to interact with, to interpret and to analyze by. So on the left we see here our, our original report, we've summarized this up by year and by region and we've added a drill through on our invoiced amount. So that allows users to then start picking out areas they may want to focus on. So we could click on Asia for 2012 like we have here. This drills us through to another report, uh, sends across the filters and applies them. So what we're doing now in this second report is only looking at a section of the data that interests us. So it's quite a detailed report but again, it's only a small snippet of the data. So we've created a report that's running and pulling back less rows of data. It's more targeted. It's going to help you do a more focused analysis of your data. And you could have multiple drill throughs, uh, multiple levels of drill down. Um, you can use those functionalities very effectively to make the reports more easy to use uh, for your end users. Uh, we also do recommend uh, trying to add in a lot of highlights and colors within your reports. So what you're trying to do here is draw attention to uh, the key figures or the key trends within your content and within your reports. So one way you could do that is by implementing conditional formatting um, at the report level. So maybe bringing in things like cell colors, formatting its icons, so maybe ticks or crosses or traffic lights, or even coloring text or adding holding to particular fields uh, so that you can really draw attention to those those values or those areas that need to be uh, investigated and obviously here it also does help to highlight those important figures and really make them stand out against uh, a, a, what could be a large amount of data so if, if you do uh, this obviously using this kind of functionality here can be um, effective when you're looking at more of the detailed reports where there's more data as it probably has more of an effect um, if there's larger amounts of values uh, than, than if you have a, a simpler report. But it can be used either way to draw attention to those key items and really make sure they're the first things that are addressed and that are analyzed. So if you wanted to look at how you might have a before and after for using highlights, colors, formatting to make the reports more user friendly, uh, we have a nice example here. So this is just a regular report for, for our revenue, for a, for a key metric um, over time. Um, it's pretty simple, but it could be quite difficult um, to, to analyze because all you see is a load of numbers. Um, it can be quite hard to differentiate those numbers. 
Um, so what you might want to do is something like this where we've gone and reformatted, we've added um, conditional formatting in the form of bars that you see on the right hand side here, we've added um, suppression of duplicates, we've added some groupings, some subtotals, so instantly this report has been made a lot more user friendly, it's easy to analyse, straight away we can use the bars to say that Europe is an issue here, we can see that Australia in Europe is an issue here as well. Um, so we're instantly having these items pointed out or displayed based on colouring or icons or highlighting, thus making it easier for the report uh, to be read and to be analysed. <clears throat> Another way you can uh, help to make your reports more effective um, is to is to utilise some of that collaborative functionality that you see within Yellowfin. So this might not be something you you do during the actual development process of the report. It might be something more towards the end where you're defining what functionality might be available. So in Yellowfin you can define for reports if they are allowed to use things like bookmarks or annotations or comments. So this is something you might take into consideration when you're putting your fin finishing touches on to say okay I want to allow an annotation, I want to allow bookmarks, I want to make sure people can comment uh, within this report. And what you can do then is you're really um, adding to the interactivity, so as well as being able to address why something, uh, sorry, where and when something's occurring or particular values, you can start addressing why it is by adding in context, and because that's really opening up the report for that collaborative functionality by a large number of users, getting a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different ideas that can all come together to make more of a collective whole and help analyze uh, your reports and your data. So if we're looking at a bit of a collaborative example, um, this could be a report we created based on a time series, and what that does then is it allows us to uh, make those annotations available, and as you can see here in our report, we've used some annotations to highlight a key figure. So we can see that our annotation is based on a date range, um, it's highlighted on the chart, it's added some, some explanation or some extra information to the report, and this you could have further annotations added by different users, to really um, bring in that extra context and extra value. And as you see on the right hand side, um, we have the use of comments as well. So that using, using those comments to open up discussions, to pinpoint particular data sets, and to generally collaborate on how it is best to analyze the data or even set up this report. So really embracing collaborative functionality within the reports will make your reports a lot more effective and a lot more usable. Um, another thing we do recommend uh, from the Yellowfin side for report creation is is really your your regard of the visualization options. So we really do recommend choosing the visualizations and the charts you use very wisely. One thing we do often recommend is for for users to to use the best charts, but not the best looking charts, because you really want to match a chart to the, the type of data or context that you're seeing in the report, and that can make it a lot more effective. So having a chart that doesn't quite fit um, the data that you have can be, um, can be counterproductive, it can cause confusion, um, it, it can waste time when the user is trying to analyze, and it might not have the desired effect. So really, you want to make sure that you can choose the chart or visualization that really fits your data and has the most benefit uh, when you're dropping that into a report. Um, we do have a nice example of that with our chart selection which I'll show you in a second. Um, another item we do often see is that pie charts can be um, often overused in, in BI and reporting. Um, obviously pie charts can be useful for looking at uh, breakdowns of a whole, um, but they often are used where they don't suit the actual business questions that have been asked or the requirements that have been put forward. So it's, it's often worth um, reviewing if you have used a pie chart, is this the most effective way of visualizing my data? Um, does this answer all the questions I want? So it's really about reviewing and seeing where and when you might use those pie charts uh, within your reports. Also, probably the last point we have here is is trying to make 
those visualizations match, but also making sure they're uh, they're easy to interpret, so they're as uncluttered as possible. So you have that interpretation, that understanding from a user that's not hidden behind um, too much information or or too many scales 